Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Paul Farkason from Formation Metals. How are you today, Paul? Oh, fine, Tracy. And of course, for you out there at Investor Intel who may not be familiar with Formation Metals, you're one of the leading cobalt players in this cobalt run. I'd like you to explain how you've invested more than $110 million to date towards production. Tracy, we have over $110 million spent on the project to date. It is an extremely advanced project, fully permitted over the last 10 years and sitting on care and maintenance right now. The, the electric vehicle industry and the battery industry is just expanding and booming every day and they need cobalt for the for the battery industry. We are a primary cobalt deposit in the United States. This project can be ready as soon as the CapEx money is, is available for us. We are ready to go underground as soon as we have the CapEx financing. I'm so excited to have you here, Paul. Everybody's talking to me about the lithium boom. Lithium, lithium. Robin Bromby actually told us that nine lithium companies listed last week in one day on the ASX. But most people are not familiar with the excitement behind the cobalt boom. So what I'd like to you to do, though, is explain how cobalt is very different from lithium and why this is such an exciting bull market. Uh, cobalt is absolutely required for the batteries in the battery industry. It, it is part of the NCA battery and the NCM battery, which are the batteries of choice in the electric vehicle industry. They require cobalt for it. Um, the, the, the product itself is a byproduct of copper and nickel out of the Democratic Republic of Congo. We are a primary cobalt deposit, which means our main commodity is cobalt, and it's located in the United States. So it gives us an edge up on any kind of competition here because we are primary pure cobalt play. All right, and speaking of that, the numbers, the reason I had this uh, sheet in front of me, uh, we pulled your numbers this morning, and for instance, since January, uh, FCO on the TSX Ventures up 360%. And FMETF on the OTCQB is up 481%. And of course, you were up over 60% last month while doing a financing of all things. So what should we expect next, Paul, with the uh, formation metals? Well, as, as we move forward here, um, the, the interest that we have created, the exposure, now that we have some uh, specs on our material out there, now that we are uh, engaging an engineering firm to start our bankable feasibility study, we'll be out and getting exposure. And there are not a lot of pure cobalt companies out here, so we're gathering a lot of interest. Uh, a lot of the players out there have looked at the lithium and now they know along with lithium and batteries there's cobalt. Where are they going to go to find cobalt? There's very, very few companies out there that have the ability to produce cobalt as a primary product. So we're getting a lot of attention. Well, of course, John Peterson, who writes for us and is a battery storage expert, keeps talking about the cobalt cliffs. Now, I think as well, you have to have a certain type of cobalt for the batteries. Is that correct? And can you explain this a little bit more for our audience? Well, um, the material must be very clean material. And uh, our, our deposit just lends itself to be a very clean material. So we will produce a very ultra high purity cobalt sulfate heptahydrate for the battery industry. And it's not so much uh, that your, your cobalt is 99.8 or 99.9%. .9 it is the nasties, it's the small a bit of nasties in the cobalt that make it an inferior product. And our uh, deposit is just a very clean deposit. So metallurgically, we're in very good shape. And of course, I just want to reiterate, you, you're in Idaho, is that correct? And what kind of mining licenses and permits are we looking at? You're in a relatively friendly area. Idaho is a relatively friendly uh, mining uh, state in the United States. Um, we have all of the permits in place that we, qu we require right now to go in production, which your main permits are your uh, mine plan of operation, which is your, your environmental permit. Uh, we have that in place right now. So we can, if we had the financing to go ahead with the CapEx, we could start construction tomorrow. The, the um, ability for us to make a clean product is, is only one aspect. The other aspect is we will have a complete transparent supply chain. We know where the product comes from, we know how it's produced, we know where the end product is. That puts us head and shoulders above the rest of the competition because they cannot supply a, a nice, clean, transparent uh, supply chain. 
Amnesty International spoke about this a couple of months ago with the, the big um, phone manufacturers that they were using product that was, um, you know, supplied by child labor. So um, at some point in time, you know, we probably will get a little bit of value added for this because at the end of the day, transparency is what it's all about. So Paul, what should we as shareholders anticipate, say, in the next two quarters? Well, I believe that we'll be uh, making some announcements about our uh, bankable feasibility study as we move forward. We also will be doing a lot of additional marketing and talking to all the players that are out there, uh, potential offtake agreements, potential CapEx financing. As we're moving forward with the feasibility study, we'll be moving forward with CapEx financing. That's the goal moving forward. Well, it's so nice to have a Cobalt leader here in our office today. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. Oh, thank you very much, Tracy, for having me.